It's being called a triple demic. What is it? It has to do with COVID-19, the flu, and RSV. I am pleased to be joined today by Dr. Jody Lanko, the Vice Chair of the Department of Medicine for Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. Dr. Lanko, a pleasure to see you. Before we get into what the triple demic is, we're familiar with COVID, we're familiar with the flu, but what is RSV exactly? So yes, thanks, Lisa. Um, RSV is a, a short term for something called respiratory syncytial virus. Um, it's been a it's a virus that we've known about as physicians and clinicians for many many years, but it's been coming to uh, press recently because it's been so rampant over the last uh, six to nine months, and really has uh, really affected our younger population, our pediatric population significantly. It generally comes in every year, typically around the same season as flu does. This year, um, similar to flu, it's coming in with a vengeance, and that's what's bringing up its popularity. So do these three upper respiratory conditions have similar symptoms? Like, could they be confused with one another? Absolutely. It's really hard to tell the difference, especially since COVID has changed over the last two years and can sometimes in some people be as simple as a cold or a stuffy, a stuffy nose, um, but all of them can have fever. All of them can have cough, congestion, sore throat. So it is really challenging to tell the difference um, apart from any of the conditions outside of doing some testing. So what are we seeing right now in the Hazleton area? Are you experiencing all three? And if, you, if so, at what levels? We've actually seen a, a significant number of RSV cases um, over the last few months. So RSV took, took a lead um, early on in the late, um, probably early fall. And it, it, it's, it was surprising to a lot of our clinicians because we typically don't see that virus till later, much later in the year. So um, that has been prominent. Um, it has still been um, uh, affecting our mostly our pediatric and our infant population. Um, adults can get RSV too, uh, but we often don't test for it in, adu in adults because it typically causes, causes just a bad cold. It's not as likely for adults to end up in the hospital with an infection like RSV as it is for younger children, specifically infants. Most people are exposed to RSV multiple times over their lifetime. So the severity of illness continues to go down. The more times you're exposed to it, um, your body develops immunity to that. So that's been ongoing. What we've seen over the last month is a uh, significant impact of influenza, particularly influenza A in the community. That is a, is a big concern for us because that unfortunately can impact our older individuals as well as our younger individuals and lead to hospitalizations and even death, especially if you're not vaccinated. So now there are vaccines for two out of the three, right? Is there a vaccine for RSV? No, there's an experimental vaccine that's in the works um, that they're looking at, um, uh, looking at administering to pregnant mothers um, in the hopes that it provides the infant in their first uh, critical few months of life when they're at the highest risk for complications from RSV. But that's still experimental. They're hoping maybe to get that out um, later this year in 2020. As you said, there are uh, COVID vaccines readily available um, in addition to the influenza, the flu shot, um, which is working so far, looking like it is being very effective, at least um, in protecting and preventing against um, the influenza A strains right now. Has Lehigh Valley had to take preparations like in case things should get out of control? So there's there's always uh, preparedness calls and uh, surge calls. You know, that's that's always an ongoing conversation. Uh, the hospitalizations are slowly starting to increase, but we haven't had um, a critical need yet. The concern is uh, these viruses spread from person to person. Um, more, they, they love being indoors. They love the, uh, the, the community events such as Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. So as family gatherings and parties and things are happening um, with much more frequency than they had been in the last few years, we're concerned about the spread of these, all three of these viruses uh, throughout the holiday season. When is it time for someone to be concerned about their symptoms and see a physician? So I recommend anybody that um, contacts us, we have a lot of virtual options to try to stay home if you're sick. Um, anytime you have a fever, anytime you have a cough or congestion, the first thing I always recommend is to do an at-home COVID test. Uh, they are available um, at most you know, uh, retail drugstores right now. There are still other testing uh, through the longer PCR tests, but the home tests are very good and a really good way of quickly ruling in or ruling out COVID. That's step number one. If it's negative or if it's positive, regardless, that's when to contact your doctor and find out if you need to be tested because not everybody needs to be tested, um, you know, for influenza or for RSV. It's it's more or less up to you and your your clinician. 
anytime there's a high fever um, or a fever that's lasting more than a day, I always recommend getting in touch with your clinician to make sure uh, you're not at high risk. And I know there was a Facebook town hall on this through Lehigh Valley. So that is still accessible that if people want to learn more about it, they could always watch that as well. Absolutely. And our, our experts, our infectious disease experts were um, on that panel as well, have providing a lot of good insight. Again, to prevent these type of things, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're still talking about the same mechanisms that we did before. Hand hygiene, covering your cough, staying home when you're sick. Um, and to some extent, if you are sick or you're concerned, you know, masks do help. It doesn't, unfortunately, protect our youngest population because they're not able to wear masks. Uh, but for anybody that is capable, if they are concerned, they do help uh, prevent the spread and also help give you some protection if you are in a large, you know, a large community.